This guide will focus on a fresh new game file, rescuing all survivors, killing all the psychopaths, and completing all the cases, including overtime mode for the true ending. Even though the true ending is non-canon. Frank's back, baby. That means that photography is back in the picture, too. Feel free to take photos at your convenience for extra PP, but killing zombies with combo weapons is generally faster and more efficient for PP gains. Just like in Dead Rising 1, there are PP stickers that are strewn about Fortune City. I will be going after some of the easy to get PP stickers in this guide, but I won't get all of them. You have several instances of free time and off the record, so feel free to hunt down the remaining PP stickers if you choose during this time. I will provide maps. Off the record kind of blindsides you with this, but you'll need to gather $1 million in cash by about the 6 hour mark. You'll have ample opportunities to get this cash even though it sounds daunting. Just make sure to smash ATMs and slot machines that you come across diligently from the start of the game until you've hit that $1 million mark. I won't be explicitly telling you about ATMs and slot machines after a certain point, so gather from them at your discretion. Just make sure you have at least $1 million when Case 5-2 Kidnapped rolls around. Just like Dead Rising 2, you'll need to get Zombrex for Frank and a handful of other survivors. Zombrex must be found, obtained from certain survivors or psychopaths, or purchased from pawn shops around Fortune City. Thankfully, unlike the original Dead Rising 2, Frank can just use Zombrex wherever he is between 7am and 8am. There is no need to return to the safe house in this time, which is a nice little convenience thing. We'll be picking up the free Zombrex when it's convenient. You can purchase Zombrex from the pawn shop, but it's very expensive. It starts at $50,000 and goes up by $50,000 for each one that you buy. We won't need any of the pawn shop Zombrex, but if you happen to miss one of the free ones, it's there as an option, and money should be no object after a certain point. Finally, your survivor's AI just appears to be straight up worse than the original Dead Rising 2. It's still reasonably good, but you will need to babysit your survivors more frequently, so keep that in mind moving forward. Of course, Off the Record now has a checkpoint system, so if one of your survivors does die, you can usually just reload a checkpoint and end up fine. Your reward for an All Survivors playthrough is... Nothing. There isn't an achievement for rescuing all the survivors and off the record, so if one of them dies or you miss one, don't sweat it. It's still worth doing this playthrough to get you very close, if not to the level cap, and that lets you get situated for other achievements and sandbox mode. I'll be showing maps and suggested routes through at various points. They will be accompanied by this countdown timer. This is your opportunity to pause the video if you'd like to take a longer look, or use it to follow along during your playthrough. The maps for these routes, as well as maps for the PP sticker locations, will be available on RecommendedPlaying.com. I'll also be including a real-time clock in the corner here and an estimated in-game clock. This is just a way for you to keep up with where this all fits in the timeline of Off the Record. I have uploaded a full playthrough with raw gameplay, broken into one hour chunks. If you're ever struggling with a part of the guide and want to see how I did it, you can use the timer in the corner to go to the corresponding video. For instance, if it's something at 2 hours and 20 minutes, that's going to be in part 3. The in-game timer won't be 100% accurate, but it should give you a general timeline of when these events occur within Dead Rising 2 off the record. Start the game and watch the cutscene if you wish. Once you gain control of Frank, you'll be thrown into a Terror is Reality game. You can't lose this, so it's just a matter of killing as many zombies as you can for bonus money. Take out the first few zombies with your fists until the platforms start to rise and you can pick up some real weapons. Then once the platform lowers, the game really starts. If you want to get a gold ranking, you'll need to throw zombies into the grinders. Jump onto the platforms to activate them, grab whatever weapons are up there, and immediately jump off to avoid getting stunned by the flames. Activate 3, but leave the 4th inactive for now. Now use a weapon like the folding chair to knock zombies into the grinders as best you can. Once the arena starts being flooded with a lot of zombies, go ahead and activate the last platform and burn them all. Now it's just a matter of repeating this process again. If you don't get a lot of money, it's not a big deal, this isn't overly valuable, and we have tons of free time to gather the 1 million that we're gonna need. Once you're done, move forward and save at the restrooms on your left if you wish, before heading right down the hallway. You'll get an off the record exclusive segment here. The goal here is simply to photograph TK and Brandon's conversation. Again, this isn't overly important, so just follow them around as best you can and take their picture whenever the PP sticker shows up above their heads. If you're quick and take good photographs, you'll probably push yourself halfway to level 2. But again, it's not overly important if you take good pictures. Once the scene is over, you'll be ambushed by thugs. You should focus on attacking one of them that's holding a lead pipe to knock him over. Then proceed to pick up the pipe and bash the rest of their heads in with it. Pick up the second lead pipe if you can. Once that's over, the outbreak will start and you'll have to run to the arena. Lots of photo ops here, it's your call whether or not to engage with them. The extra PP can be helpful in this early stage of the game. Head forward, and you can enter the green room on the left to find a bit of a teaser of what's to come, otherwise just head out to the Fortune City Arena. 
Make sure to smash the ATMs on the right with the lead pipe before continuing. Just follow your marker, killing any zombies in your way, and taking photographs as you see fit until you reach the exit. Now you'll be in the safe house. We need to get Frank a Zombrex, but we can do some things on the way first. You can head left to grab some healing items before heading out and saving on your left again if you wish, then head to the vents and exit out to Royal Flush Plaza. Immediately after exiting, turn around and take a picture of the PP sticker on the exit sign for up to a thousand PP. Now just follow the way out of Royal Flush Plaza, make sure to pick up the baseball bat on your right before the staircase. Grab the cash and the key on the way. We'll be collecting these security box keys as they're convenient. We'll be prioritizing the ones that have a lot of cash or Zombrex. After exiting, take a picture of the dark bean for another PP sticker. Our target is Roy's Mart for Zombrex, but instead, head right and zone into the Americana Casino. Smash any slot machines on your way and pick up the cash on the ground that's convenient. Our destination right now is Benny Jack's Barbecue Shack. Head towards the arena and then turn around to take a picture of the Americana Casino sign for another PP sticker. Then turn around and take a picture of the American Historium sign for another PP sticker. Now head into Benny Jack's Barbecue Shack and up the stairs on the right side. At the top, jump onto the counter and then onto the lights. These are kind of clunky to navigate so make sure to jump earlier than you'd expect as Frank will grab the edges. If you jump too late, you'll just drop so jump a bit earlier. Collect the cash on the way. On the third light, turn and take a picture of the PP sticker on the plane. Then continue along the lights, pick up the security box key on the fifth light before continuing forward. Grab the cache on the last two lights and jump onto the alcove ahead of you. On the left, make sure to get the sports fan face paint on the box. This is part of an outfit that will give us increased movement speed, bonus gambling ability, and the ability to consume alcohol without fear of getting sick. We'll unlock these bonuses once we get all four pieces and it's worth wearing for the remainder of the game. Even though it looks really, really dumb. Now collect the cash and smash the money case here for $10,000. Pick up the battle axe if you need a weapon and jump down and head back into Royal Flush Plaza. Ignore the zombies for now and follow your waypoint. Stick to your right as there's an ATM on this side. We'll be coming across this ATM all the time so make sure to smash it every time for $10,000. Once you've done that, enter Sport Trance on your right. On the center rack on the right side grab the sports fan cleats. Then take a picture of the casino cup sign above the golfing area for another PP sticker. Now leave Sport Trance. Continue forward and enter the sturdy package on your right. Head to the checkout and grab the security box key from behind it before exiting. When you're outside, take another photograph of the flaming crap sign for another PP sticker. Then turn around and continue towards the waypoint. When you see the car, collect any cash around the slot machines and then take a picture of the pillar near Roy's Mart for another PP sticker. Now exit onto Fortune Park. Head left and take a picture of the silver strip sign for another PP sticker. Now continue up the silver strip hanging on the right side. Smash the ATMs you come across here before entering the hot Exciterama on your right. Grab the erotic magazine from the racks on your left, then grab the security box key from behind the register, now head into the back room and grab the sports fan helmet from the rack and exit hot Exciterama. Now cross the street and enter one little duck bingo. Head to the back and pick up the cash and the rescue magazine before exiting. Try and keep both of these magazines in your inventory at all times. It will greatly assist in getting to or very near the level cap in a single playthrough. If you need to ditch one for whatever reason, ditch the erotic magazine since it only applies to female survivors. Both of these magazines will respawn so if you drop one you can always pick them up from these locations again at any time. Now cross back across the street and take a picture of the Angel Us sign for another PP sticker. Now just drop down off the stage and head north towards the Yucatan Casino. Head inside and you'll get a cutscene. You also start the battle with Ted and Snowflake. This will likely take you several attempts to get right so don't feel ashamed. It took me a lot more than I care to admit. Go ahead and grab the fire axe in front of you and just start laying into Ted. He should go down without much fuss, but make sure not to hit Snowflake here. Thankfully, you have checkpoints in Off the Record, so if you accidentally damage Snowflake, or more than likely, die here, you can just restart right here. Once Ted is down, you'll want to move forward into the pen and climb up to the back so Snowflake can't hit you. At the top, take a picture of the PP sticker near the three tiki torches, then drop down to the left side. Drop your magazines here for now, trading them for the two stakes here. You'll want to get Snowflake to chase you here and avoid her until she runs away. Then once she does, grab a stake and throw it between you and her before running a fair distance from her. If you're lucky as she runs you down, she'll slow down and go for the stake instead of you, but this isn't always the case. Pick up your magazines once Snowflake has eaten the first two stakes and then pick up the third stake on the rock and repeat the process. Make sure you have your two magazines since it gives us a massive head start on PP gains after this fight's over. 
This fight is buggy to say the least, and Snowflake will frequently just not go for your stakes that you place. Be persistent, and thankfully with the checkpoint system and off the record, it makes this way more forgiving and less tedious than a failure was in Dead Rising 2. Once you fed Snowflake the three stakes, you'll get a cutscene and Snowflake will join. Immediately head to your right and smash the ATMs for another $10,000 before heading into the employees only room to find Lenny. Talk to Lenny and he'll start running. Make sure to stay close to him as he'll stop if you get too far away. He'll eventually lead you across the Yucatan to the restrooms. Press the button to turn on the slot machines, then talk to Lenny to get him to join. Feel free to save here if you wish as well. Now head across the Yucatan Casino, collecting any cash from the ground, ATMs, or slot machines that you come across until you reach the Palisades Mall. Once inside, immediately turn around and take a picture of the Yucatan Casino for another PP sticker. Then move forward and take a picture of the Shank sign on your left for another PP sticker. Turn around and head towards the Venus Touch. Jump onto the slot machines on the way to find another security box key. Now head into the grotto. Inside, head right and enter the bar to find another security box key, then double back. Enter Coconut Sports Town on your right and get the sports fan outfit from the spinning racks at the back of the store. This is the final piece of the sports fan outfit. You'll immediately get a substantial speed increase and you don't have to worry about consuming too much alcohol from now on. These pieces of clothing will also be available in the locker in the safe house from now on. You will need to change out of it at several points in the story, so you can just go back to the locker and put them back on when you need to. Now we need to get Frank some Zombrex, so follow your waypoint south towards the Atlantica Casino. Smash any ATMs or slot machines you come across at your discretion. At the entrance to the Atlantica Casino, take a picture of the Uranus Zone poster on your right for another PP sticker. Then head inside. Head left until you find a poster of Roger and Reed. Take a photograph of it for another PP sticker. Continue along the left side until you find the giant clam near the entrance to the Uranus Zone. Take a picture of it for another PP sticker before heading down towards Fortune Park. Jump into the fountain by the giant Neptune statue and grab another security box key. This one is important, it gives us a Zombrex. Then jump out and turn around and take a picture of Neptune for another PP sticker. Now exit out to Fortune Park. Immediately head to your left to the giant alien head and take its picture for another PP sticker. Then turn around and take a picture of the Fortune City sign near the washroom grotto for yet another PP sticker. Also turn around and take a picture of the Atlantica Casino sign for yet another PP sticker. Once you're done, head across the way to Royal Flush Plaza and enter. Now enter Roy's Mart on your right. On the way, take a picture of the sign for Roy's Mart for another PP sticker before entering it. You'll have to fight three looters in here, but Snowflake should make short work on them if you're low on weapons. Otherwise, just bash them with whatever you have, and they will go down easily. Jump over the counter and talk to Denise. She'll join up. Then head to the back room and grab the Zombrex. Feel free to grab the orange juice next to it if you need a heal. Then take a photograph of the poster above the Zombrex for another PP sticker. If you need a weapon, restock from the looters before heading back out to Royal Flush Plaza. It should be very close to 7am here, so once you get a prompt for Zombrex, head to a safe spot and use it. You'll drop whatever you're holding, so make sure to pick it up again. Now just take these survivors back to the safe house. Smash any ATMs or slot machines you find along the way. You'll want to have at least $25,000 here, but it shouldn't be much of an issue. Once you're back, you'll get a ton of PP for rescuing these three survivors. Go ahead and save if you want, and then head back out to Royal Flush Plaza. Restock on a baseball bat if you need a weapon, and continue down the hallway. You should find Lashandra at the Dark Bean. Ignore her for now, and head right to find Gordon. Talk to him, and he'll join you. Then go ahead and take him to LaChandra to reunite them. There's a PP sticker opportunity here, so get ready with your camera. After that's done, talk to LaChandra and she'll join up. Now, since they're here, you may as well just head back with these two into the safe house. You'll have a little bit of time to kill before case 1-1 starts. Inside, head to the back of the safe house and up the stairs on your left. Use the elevator here and exit onto the roof. Now run behind the elevator and grab the Zombrex before heading back down. This Zombrex isn't available until after you get the one from Roy's Mart, so keep that in mind. Now head into the security office to finish case 1-1 and start case 1-2, alive on location. Head out towards the ducks and you'll get the maintenance key from Sullivan. Then exit through the vents. Head through this area and you'll get a call from Stacy about a survivor. Then just continue forward. Once you reach the door, you'll get a cutscene. You'll now have access to combo weapons. First things first though, take a picture of the workbench for another PP sticker. Now combine a baseball bat and a box of nails in the maintenance room to make a spike bat. This is going to be one of our go-to weapons from here on out. Once you're finished, set your marker for no one to fold them and exit to your right and enter the Americana Casino. Just follow the marker here, smashing any slot machines on your way until you find Bill. Give him $20,000 and he'll ask for another $5,000. What a greedy guy. 
give it to him and he'll join up with you. If you don't have the cash, smashing the slot machines around should be more than enough to get you through. Now it's recommended to head back to the Royal Flush Plaza with Bill so he doesn't cause you any problems. Once you're back, just head back to the safe house. You'll probably get a call about Moe's imaginations from Stacy here. Drop off Bill and immediately leave the safe house again. If you want to recoup some of your expenses, head to the room past the maintenance room on your left, grab the flashlight and the computer case, combine these at the workbench to make a hacker. The hacker provides extra money from ATMs and slot machines so it can be a reasonable way to get the cash for the 1 million that we need. Realistically we won't ever need to use a hacker, just smashing is good enough for us. Speaking of smashing, make another spike bat. Now set your marker to Alive on Location. Head across Royal Flush Plaza, use the hacker on the ATMs on the right side for $40,000 instead of the $10,000 for smashing them, or just smash them for $10,000. I find the hacker just really clunky to use so I don't bother with it, instead I just smash everything with spike bats. It's your call, use whatever you prefer from here on out. Make your way to the exit, and zone into Fortune Park. Now head towards the Fortune City Hotel, but make a quick detour. Run down the stairs and head to Moe's Imaginations. Take a picture of the sign for another PP sticker, then talk to the looter to activate the pawn shops around Fortune City. Just head out of here for now, and back up to the fountain. Take a picture of the sign for another PP sticker before heading towards the hotel. Before you enter the hotel, jump onto the concrete block and onto the scaffolding. Here head to the other side and grab another security box key. Then drop down and enter the Fortune City Hotel. You'll start case 1-3 in security. Talk to Rebecca to get her moving, then turn to take a picture of the PP sticker by the elevator, then turn back around to take a picture of the PP sticker near the geese behind the front desk. Now follow Rebecca, and make sure to pick up the security box key on the way. This one is important as it provides a Zombrex, so make sure not to miss it. Head through the South Plaza and take a picture of the Soldier's Shield for another PP sticker. Meet back up with Rebecca at the washrooms. Save if you want, otherwise talk to her to get her moving again and head towards the Fortune City Arena. You'll encounter some looters here, just smash them with your spike bat and they should go down pretty easy. You can grab their weapons if you need a restock. Now continue towards the Fortune City Arena, enter the maintenance room on the side and take a picture of the workbench for another PP sticker. Now meet back up with Rebecca and exit to the Fortune City Arena. Immediately turn to your left and climb up the speakers to get onto the large display in the center. Slowly proceed up this walkway to find the Terror is Reality Moosehead, then double back and drop down on the right side. Pick up the security box key here and collect the cash around before meeting up with Rebecca. Use the moose head to clear out any zombies around the area, then examine the door with Rebecca nearby to enter. Re-enter this room immediately after the cutscene and grab the security box key on your left. Now just leave the arena and head towards your marker for case 1-4, Alliance. Turn left and take a picture of the map of Fortune City for another PP sticker, then head back to the main strip and take a picture of the souvenir kiosk on your left for another PP sticker. Now just continue up the strip and enter Cash Gordon's Casino on your left. Take a picture of the slot machine display on your left for another PP sticker before exiting. Now head forward and enter Jug's Bar and Grill. Head to the bar and take a picture of the blender for another PP sticker. Then go ahead and mix yourself some mixed drinks. Beer, beer, and whiskey, whiskey are the main combo here for painkillers. Now exit Jug's and head into the Paradise Platinum screens. Take a picture of the... Super fighting robot. Mega Man. And ...display for yet another PP sticker. Now leave and head back towards Royal Flush Plaza. Once you're inside, just head towards the safe house. Make sure to smash the slot machines and ATMs on the left side on the way back. Also, feel free to grab a pair of boxing gloves and a bowie knife on the top of the newsstand on the way back if you have the inventory space. Otherwise, just head back through the maintenance room. If you're short on weapons, make another spike bat before heading into the safe house. Once inside, head to the security room to complete case 1-4. Grab some juice if you need a healing item, save if you need to, and then head back out to Royal Flush Plaza. Restock on a spike bat and a hacker if you want, and then head out towards Fortune Park. Make sure to smash the ATMs on the way. You'll get a call from Stacy here about two men in the Shank store in the Palisades Mall. Exit to Fortune Park, cross it, and head through to the Atlantica Casino. Inside, head to your right and enter the security room. Take a picture of the PP sticker next to the monitors. Then turn around and grab the cash and the security box key before leaving the security room. Now head towards the Palisades Mall following your marker for Welcome to the Family. Make sure to smash the ATMs and slot machines along the way, then enter the Palisades. Now just head north towards Shanks, again smashing slot machines and ATMs that you come across. This is the last time in the guide I'm going to mention smashing ATMs and slot machines, so just continue to do it from now on at your discretion. Head into Flexen on your left and take a picture of the poster at the back for another PP sticker before exiting. You can just smash a window. Then continue to the Beachbody Swim House and enter it. 
Take a picture of the surfboards behind the register for another PP sticker before exiting and heading north towards Shanks. Once inside, clear out the zombies and alternate talking to Kenneth and Jack and they'll eventually join you. If you need to heal yourself or Kenneth, use some of the food here. Then exit Shanks and head into the Yucatan Casino on your right. Just cut through the Yucatan and head towards the exit to the Silver Strip. Cut to the right side and use the maintenance room here for a pair of knife gloves if you need a weapon. You can also combine the battery and goblin mask for a roaring thunder for a laugh. Just use it on a group of zombies, then move on. Continue down the Silver Strip, head into the Royal Flesh Plaza. Now just head to the safe house, restocking on knife gloves or a spike bat if you need it along the way. Looters have a tendency to show up now and interrupt your less competent survivors, so go ahead and take any out if you see them. Then once you're back, just zone into the safe house. Save if you want, otherwise head back outside. Restock on weapons at the maintenance room if you need to, otherwise just cut through Royal Flush Plaza and head out to Fortune Park. Make sure it's after 12pm here, and maybe even after 1pm. I had some discrepancies and issues with these next set of survivors. From Fortune Park, head left and up the Silver Strip to find Chad fighting zombies near the maintenance room. Clear them out and talk to him to get him to join you. Now you'll want to head south, back through Fortune Park, and towards the arena. You can grab healing items from Jugs and other stores along the way if you need any for you or Chad. At the arena, you'll find Doris on the souvenir kiosk. Clear the zombies around her and she'll jump down to Chad. They'll have a hug and it's another chance for a photo op. Talk to Doris afterwards and she'll join up with you. You'll likely get a call around here for Luscious Lady. Head north and enter the Americana Casino on your left. Set your marker to Luscious Lady and follow it to find Kristen in the back of the security room. Talk to her and she'll join up with you. She's drunk, so carry her, and take the rest of your survivors out to Royal Flesh Plaza. Now just head back through the tunnel, and make sure Chad and Doris are with you as you zone into the safe house. You'll likely have a bit of time here until 3pm when the next scoop becomes available. Make sure to restock on weapons and healing items here as we have a psychopath battle coming up. You'll want spike bats, knife gloves, and some mixed drinks. You can quickly make a spike bat and zone out into the safe house, then back into Royal Flush Plaza, and then make another one really easily so you can use this to restock quickly. When you have weapons, head right into the Americana Casino to pick up some mixed drinks. Mix wine and wine for quick steps and beer and beer for painkillers. You'll get a call from Stacy about the scoop, people like us. Once you do, and you're equipped, head out to the Platinum Strip. Now just follow your marker north to the Atlantica Casino. Here you'll start a psychopath battle with a familiar face. Chuck is virtually identical to Leon from Dead Rising 2. The strategy here is exactly the same except for the fact that Chuck has firebombs he'll throw at you from a distance. We actually start this fight in the ideal location, which is really good for us. Just wait for Chuck to charge you and hop the fence once he gets close. Hopefully he'll get stuck and you can take him out without much issue. Otherwise, just repeat getting him to charge you, hopping the fence, and then getting a few good whacks in before he runs off. Then just repeat this process. You shouldn't have much issue, and the checkpoint here will give you as many tries as you need to be successful. Just a matter of hopping the fence, getting a couple whacks in, baiting him in, hopping the fence, and keep that up until he's down. Again, hopefully he gets stuck. If he doesn't, it's not a huge deal. You'll likely have a bit of time to kill here before the next set of survivors at 4pm. Go ahead and kill some zombies using combo weapons, or take pictures of the remaining PP stickers that you may have missed in the Platinum Strip, Fortune City Park, or Silver Strip. You can also run up the Silver Strip to check out the motorcycle trailer, or grab a new pair of knife gloves from the maintenance room there. At 4pm, try to be near the Fortune City Hotel. You'll get a call from Stacy about four turbo nerds in the South Plaza. Once you get a call, head into the Fortune City Hotel. Set your marker for Brains Over Brawn and hoof it to the south side of the South Plaza. Enter the Ultimate Playhouse on your left and talk to the guys in here until they join up with you. This is your first reasonably large set of survivors and the AI is terrible in groups. Just be careful and proceed slowly making sure no one gets left behind. The arena is crawling with zombies and another survivor is going to become available shortly so it's easier and safer to head back up north and leave the hotel into Fortune Park. Now just cut across the park to the Atlantica Casino. Kill time here gathering money until you get a call from Stacy at 5pm. Set your marker for Art Appreciation and then head north into the Palisades Mall. Head into Trendy Cindy on your right and grab another security box key from behind the register. Then exit and head north to the far side of the Palisades. It's likely you'll need to kill some looters here so if you hear the music just take them out. Then take the escalator to the second level and enter Clearu Collection. Talk to Randolph and buy his painting for $3,000 and he'll join up with you. Just leave it there, we don't need it and off the record. Then head back down and enter the Yucatan Casino with your party of five. Simply cut through the Yucatan Casino and exit out into the Silver Strip once everyone gets to the door. 
Now just head south towards Royal Flush Plaza. If you're lucky, you will find a clown car on the way here. If you do, you can jump into it and carry all of your survivors to the door. It's very slightly easier and faster than walking, but it is randomized. If you don't get it, just get back to Royal Flush Plaza the old-fashioned way. Now cut through Royal Flush Plaza and head back to the safe house with your posse. You'll probably get a call from Stacy around here at 6pm about two comedians arguing in the Uranus Zone. That's our next destination, but focus on getting these guys back to the safe house safely. You'll probably have to clear out some looters along the way. Do a quick head count before you enter the safe house. Drop off your survivors, save if you want, and then head into the security room to start the next set of cases. You'll start case 2-2, a familiar face here. Go ahead and set your marker to it now. This is a psychopath battle, so do appropriate restocking on combo weapons and mixed drinks. Spike bats and knife gloves are a go-to, as always. Once you're good on weapons, head out to Fortune Park. From Fortune Park, head towards the giant alien face to enter Uranus Zone. Take a left and head to the bar. Use the blender here to make painkillers using two beers or quick steps using two wines. Two to three mixed drinks should be plenty. When you're ready, follow your marker to the men's restrooms where you'll start the psychopath battle versus Brandon. Brandon will jump into stalls and start kicking zombies at you. You can kill them or ignore them. What you should do is run parallel to the stalls and watch behind you. He'll always jump out from behind you and try to take a swipe at you, so when he does, turn around and slug him with your spike bat once or twice. With the four-piece sports fan and an active quick step, he'll never be able to hit you like this. Just take a swing at him and maybe a follow-up. Off the record seems to reduce the damage on subsequent hits, so follow-up swings do consistently less damage. That means overall it's better to just take a single hit and then back out for most of the remaining psychopaths in the game. After that initial exchange, Brandon will take a counter swing or run and jump into the stalls again. Just repeat the process and you should come out ahead. Brandon shouldn't be very difficult and you should be able to take him down without much issue following the strategy. After the fight, you can take a picture of Vicky and Brandon if you want, then turn around and grab the money case near the pile of cash. Smash this for $25,000. Now head out of the restrooms. Stick to the left side and enter the bank in the Uranus Zone. It's time to use our security box keys. Use the keypad by the vault to get inside. Now just run around in here using whatever keys you have. Make sure to grab all the cash, smash the money case, and get the two Zombrex here from the boxes. The other rewards like guns, magazines, or landmines will respawn, but the cash and Zombrex are a one-time deal. At this point in the game I had $878,000 which is extremely close to the 1 million that we need. It should be a minor issue to get the remaining $130,000 through rescuing survivors and smashing slot machines and ATMs along the way. When you're done, head out and set your marker for Two's Company. Follow the marker to From Fortune With Love to find Walter and Royce. Talk to both of them and listen to their bad jokes. Give the trophy to Walter, because otherwise he'll cry and be a general nuisance. Then pay Royce five grand to have him join you as well. It's just easier this way, trust me. Exit out and head left down the tunnel. Follow this and it will take you to the South Plaza. You'll probably get a call from Stacy around this time about a guy in the pub of gold at the Silver Strip. That's our next destination. Exit into the South Plaza and then turn right and leave the hotel to get to Fortune Park. Set your marker to Once Bitten and head up to the pub of gold. Be careful here, you won't be able to heal whoever has the comedy trophy so you have to babysit a little bit more. Once you're in the pub of gold, head to the back and you'll find Jared. Talk to him and give him a Zombrex here. Take his picture when he's injecting himself for a PP bonus. Then give him a shoulder and it's time to make your way back to the safe house. Exit pub of gold and head south and return to Royal Flush Plaza. Then cut through the Royal Flush Plaza, through the tunnel and eventually back to the vent. Zone in and rescue these three survivors. Once inside, Head to the security room to complete the case. Standard stuff here. Save if you want, then exit out to Royal Flush Plaza. Restock on spike bats if you need to, and then set your marker to case 3-2, Sign of Life. This is in the Palisades Mall. Go ahead and cut through the Royal Flush Plaza, and zone out to Fortune Park then head through Fortune Park to the Atlantica Casino. Then head up through the Atlantica Casino and enter the Palisades. Now just head straight through the Palisades to the door to the underground tunnels. If you do need a weapon, you can stop by the maintenance room at the north side of the Palisades near the entrance to the tunnel for a set of knife gloves. Then head down into the underground. Follow your marker and you'll have a short scene where you have an opportunity to take pictures. 
If you don't want to, just head forward and you'll get onto the train. The mercenaries here are much more deadly than in Dead Rising 2. Take it slow and steady, but our strategy is the same, just run them down with knife gloves. Don't be afraid to run to the back of the train to grab healing items if you need to. Just cut everyone you see down and get to the door at the end of the train. After the encounter, you should get a call from Stacy about a paramedic on the silver strip here. Set your marker for code blue. However, there's a free, easy to get Zombrex down here. Head towards the utility vehicle in front of you and get inside. Drive this along the train tracks trying your best to avoid zombies as these have terrible durability. Pick up the Zombrex on the way and then continue driving forward. Jump onto this train car to find another security box key and then jump into a new utility vehicle to continue forward. You'll eventually hit a sign that says to Palisades Mall. Enter the loading dock and get out of your vehicle. Exit up the stairs and get back to the Palisades. You can restock on knife gloves at the maintenance room here if you need it. Otherwise, cross the Palisades and into the Yucatan Casino. Now just cut through the Yucatan Casino. You can stop and save if you want at the restrooms or restock on mixed drinks at Baron Von Brothaus. Wine and wine makes a quick step and beer and beer makes a painkiller. Quick steps will be much more useful in this fight versus the psychopath coming up. You'll get a call around here about Cucina Donacci. Set your marker to taste like chicken. Once you get the call, zone from the Yucatan Casino into the food court. Follow your waypoint into Casino Donacci and you'll start a psychopath battle. Chef Antoine is more annoying than threatening. He'll mostly just zip around and gorge himself. Your goal is to just run him down, smacking him until he counter hits you. Then he'll run to the next plate of food to recover health. If you burn a quick step, you should be able to minimize the amount of self-healing that he does and just be able to wear him down by tanking the counter hits that he throws at you. When he eats, you get a chance for a PP bonus photo, so go ahead and take it if you want. Otherwise, he's a pretty easy psychopath. Just run around the kitchen, smacking him whenever you get close. Once you've won, you can find Cinda in the back room. Talk to her and she won't join you until you bring Jasper, who's hanging out at good old hamburger fiefdom. Leave Cucina Donacci, cross the food court, and jump onto the vending machines and then onto the awning to get up to the roof of hamburger fiefdom. Talk to Jasper and he'll join up with you. Then drop off of Hamburger Fiefdom and cross back to Kachina Donacci with Jasper. Talk to Cinda and she'll join up with you. Now set your marker back to Code Blue. Leave Kuchina Donacci and exit the food court to the Yucatan Casino. Just head straight forward to the right side and exit down the stairs to the Silver Strip. Now follow your waypoint down the Silver Strip while staying on the left side. Once you pass the ATMs by the Hot Exciterama, head left and enter the double doors on your right to find Sven. Take his picture for a PP bonus and then talk to him. Tim Duggan will die, but Tim Duggan always dies. Head south down the Silver Strip to Fortune Park and zone into Royal Flush Plaza once your survivors are close. Now it's just a matter of cutting through Royal Flush Plaza and returning these three survivors to the safe house. You'll probably need to kill a few sets of looters on the way there. Successfully rescuing Sven will yield a Zombrex. Go ahead and save here if you need it before exiting back into Royal Flush Plaza. It's standard procedure as always here. Restock on spike bats and knife gloves if you need some weapons. Otherwise, just make your way across Royal Flush Plaza and exit out to Fortune Park. Now head to the Atlantica Casino and enter it. Once you're inside, make your way to the Palisades Mall exit. But before you zone, check your watch. You need to wait until 1am before zoning into the Palisades. Kill time in the Atlantica looting slot machines and once it's 1am, zone into the Palisades Mall. You need to be fast here. Run forward and hang to the left side until you come across the giant pink stuffed elephant. Grab it and head to Mark who's hanging over the edge. This is kind of confusing and awkward, but you need to find a prompt on the ground to place the elephant. You can't just put it down like you would with any other weapon. Once you place it, Mark will land on the elephant and automatically join you. Then run back to the toy store and grab the stuffed bull. Then run to the other side of the palisades towards Chocolate Confession. Put the bull down on the prompt under Irving and he'll automatically join you as well. If any of them falls, you can simply reload your checkpoint and try again. You have to be fairly quick on the second one. Now that you have these two with you, head south and return to the Atlantica Casino. Our goal is the South Plaza, so just cut through the Atlantica Casino and exit into Fortune Park. Then cross the park and enter the Fortune City Hotel once Mark and Irvin are with you. Now continue through the South Plaza on the right side until you find Willa and Terry. Clear out the zombies around them and potentially any looters that followed you. Talk to Willa and get her to join first. Then go back and talk to Terry so she joins. Don't forget to talk to Terry. Now we just need to head back to the safe house. The easiest way is north through the hotel to Fortune Park. Then turn left in Fortune Park and head back to Royal Flush Plaza. Finally go through Royal Flush Plaza, into the tunnel and through the vents. 
You should be intimately familiar with the route at this point. Wait until everyone's here and zone into the safe house. Save if you need to. You'll likely have some time to kill before the next set of survivors spawn. It's about 1-2 to in-game hours. Do whatever you see fit in this time frame. Restock on weapons and healing items, kill zombies with combo weapons for PP, or hunt down some additional PP stickers. I headed to the Americana Casino, restocked on mixed drinks, and killed some zombies with combo weapons. I also looted the last bit of cash I needed to hit the $1 million mark at this point. You still have a ton of time to gather the cash, so don't worry about it if you're lagging behind. Regardless, kill time until around 4am, at which point you'll want to head to the Royal Flush Plaza. After 4am, go ahead and zone into Fortune Park. Head left and up the Silver Strip. Hang on the right side and continue north until you reach the stage. You can take some pictures of Angel Lust for some bonus PP if you want, otherwise talk to Gianna. Take a picture during their big finish for even more PP and they'll join up with you. Head down the Silver Strip with Angel Lust and re-enter the Royal Flush Plaza. Head through Royal Flush Plaza until you reach the safe house. Take out the looters that will inevitably harass you and your new bandmates, drop off your survivors and you'll get some cash and a combo card for your trouble. The next set of events won't occur until 7am, this is another roughly 2 in-game hours of time for you to kill. Restock on weapons like spike bats and knife gloves from Royal Flash Plaza, then go and get quick steps and painkillers from the Americana Casino because there is a psychopath battle at 7am. Go ahead and kill zombies in the meantime with combo weapons to try and get some PP to push you to another level. Just make sure you have full inventory when 7am rolls around. You'll want to be near the Fortune Park site of Royal Flush Plaza at 7. Use a Zombrex, and then once you get the call from Stacy about the wedding, exit to Fortune Park. Set your marker to Here Comes the Groom and head left up the Silver Strip until you reach the Swept White Chapel. Enter and you'll start the Psychopath battle. Randy can and probably will mess you up, but our strategy hasn't changed. Hit and run tactics with the spike bat or knife gloves work best. Wait for him to attack, dodge it, then run in and take a swing before backing out for another opportunity. Randy deals a lot of damage, but you have a lot of chances to heal during this fight. If you get hit and need to heal, just jump over the pews or run behind the sign to get away from him for a second and that should give you enough distance to get the heal off. Randy will usually taunt after he hits you and this is a prime opportunity to get a free hit on him. Or you can take a picture for a pretty sizable PP bonus. Just be careful, the chainsaw can still hit you while he's taunting, so hit him from the back or the side. If you have 3 mixed drinks, you should have more than enough healing to take him down before he takes you down. But there are some healing items at the back of the chapel if you really need them. Once Randy's down, go ahead and talk to Danny at the back of the chapel. Get her to join you. You can also grab Randy's giant pink chainsaw and use it if you'd like to conserve your combo weapons. It's just a matter of getting Danny back to the safe house now. Head south down the Silver Strip and zone into the Royal Flush Plaza. Then just cut through it, escorting Danny back to the safe house. Save here if you want, and head out. You should have gotten a call once you re-entered Royal Flush Plaza about someone at the hotel at 8am. Set your marker to Slave to Fashion. Restock on a spike bat if you need to before heading right and into the Americana Casino. Restock on mixed drinks if you need to at the bar in the center and then head to the Fortune City Arena. Inside the arena, just cut the left path around the giant display and enter the South Plaza. Enter the unfinished store directly in front of you. There may be looters here so take them out. Then head to the underwear display and change into your boxers. This is required, so don't forget this step. Now continue northeast to the Fortune City Hotel. Turn left and find Europa on the planter by the elevators. She'll tell you she won't join until you change into your underwear like she is, but you're already in your underwear, so she'll just join up immediately. Once she jumps down, talk to her again and you'll be forced to carry her. With Europa, head back down to the South Plaza and stand near the service entrance to Uranus Zone. Wait here until you get a call from Stacy for quarter circle to forward. Once you do, set your marker and zone. Continue through the tunnel until you reach the Uranus Zone, Turn to your right and avoid zombies while heading to the fireworks display. Put Europa down somewhere safe and clear out the zombies around the fireworks kiosk. Once you're done, jump up the backside and talk to Eric Masters. He'll join. Jump down, pick up Europa, and head towards the center of the Uranus zone, and then zone into Fortune Park. Cross Fortune Park with your survivors and zone into the Royal Flush Plaza. Now it's just a matter of getting these two back to the safe house. Avoid the looters if possible and zone in. 
Once you're back, head to the restrooms and use the locker on your left to change back into your glorious sports fan outfit, then save if you wish before heading back out. You'll likely have even more time to kill here. The main case isn't until 1pm which is probably around 3 in-game hours from now. Another case will be available at 12pm but it isn't overly time sensitive. Since we have nothing better to do at this point, we should just do it now. But if you want to hold off, feel free as we will be coming back here again anyways. This is a psychopath battle so go ahead and restock on mixed drinks at the Americana Casino and combo weapons from the Royal Flush Plaza. Our destination here is the Palisades. Go ahead and kill some time on the way by killing zombies with combo weapons as you go through Royal Flush Plaza, Fortune Park, up the Silver Strip, and through the Yucatan Casino. If you need more mixed drinks, stop by Baron Von Broadhouse in the Yucatan and use the blender. If you're low on combo weapons, the maintenance room in the Palisades has a set of knife gloves for you to make. Just zone into the Palisades, make a pair, then zone back into the Yucatan and repeat until you have a full inventory. Be inside the Yucatan Casino at 12pm and you'll get a call from Stacy about Slappy. Once you do, go ahead and zone back into the Palisades. Climb the escalator directly in front of you to get to the second level. If you need to heal, head into Lee's Fine Liquors to chug some booze. Then approach the mascot to trigger the psychopath battle. This hasn't changed from the original Dead Rising 2 and you can easily lock Slappy into a pattern by utilizing Frank's jump kick. The hardest part of this fight is setting up. You'll want to run at Slappy and nail him with a jump kick. Once you do, you'll be knocked over. Hit him once with your weapon of choice and then back out a safe distance. He'll get up and start spinning. This is an opportunity to get a photograph for some bonus PP. Once he stops, he'll be dizzy and be stunned. This is your opportunity to nail him with another jump kick to knock him over and repeat the process. Make absolutely sure you use a jump kick. A basic attack won't knock him over and he'll start rollerblading around like it's the 90s again. You don't want to go back to the 90s. Save yourself the trouble. Don't be a dingus like me. Just jump kick him after he gets dizzy. You'll have a way easier fight and he'll go down way faster. Regardless of Slappy's difficulty, you have an unlimited stock of healing items via the booze and Lee's fine liquors. Since you're wearing the sports fan outfit, you can't get sick from the alcohol so you can drink as much as you need to. Head in there if you ever need a refresh. Also, make sure to do it after the fight if you took any damage. Once he's dead, you'll get the flamethrower combo card and you can pick up Slappy's flamethrower if you want. Right now though, you need to hoof it back to the safe house pretty quickly. The next case starts at 1pm. You'll probably get a call from Stacy on the way back when you're in Royal Flush Plaza. Just get in the vent and head to the security room and complete case 4-1, Boomtown. This is one of the harder parts and off the record due to the amount of mercenaries with guns you'll have to take on. Exit the safe house and you'll get a call from Stacy about all the mercs drilling into the vaults. You'll also likely get a call about the Venus Touch in the Palisades. Ignore it for now. Restock on weapons if you need to. Knife gloves are the preference here. Otherwise, head right into the Americana Casino. Inside, immediately head to your left and take out the mercenaries outside the cashier's office. Then enter it and run down the mercenaries inside. Use mixed drinks like Quick Steps and Painkillers liberally here. We'll have a chance to restock after every single vault. Once you've cleared out the mercenaries, head to the drill at the back and pick up a sledgehammer. Try and keep this with you as it's one of the easiest ways to take out the drills. Next to the drill is also a money case which contains $75,000. Make sure to pick it up and smash it for the dosh, especially if you haven't hit that $1 million mark yet. Head to the next casino, but on your way out, take a photograph of the PP sticker above the inside of the cashier's office. At the exit, also make sure to pick up the security box key before heading out. Head to the center of the Americana to restock on mixed drinks if you need to. Otherwise, head back into Royal Flush Plaza. You have another opportunity here to restock on combo weapons. Otherwise, cut through the standard way to Fortune Park. But this time, hang a left at Roy's Mart and enter the Slot Ranch Casino. It's pretty much a straight shot from the door to the cashier. Kill any mercenaries you see in here and heal as necessary. This hallway is actually pretty dangerous, so don't be afraid to take cover behind the wall and then sprint at the mercs once they light up on shooting. You can restock on some healing items in the break room if you took damage, then just head to the drill at the back and use the sledgehammer on it until it's destroyed. Another vault, another money case to the left of the drill. Smash this one for $60,000 before heading out. Turn left and follow your marker now to the food court. Kill any mercenaries in your way then just continue forward into the Yucatan Casino. If you need more mixed drinks, Baron Von Broadhouse is on your left. Otherwise, just follow the marker to the cashier's office. Obviously, take out any resistance in your way. Use the walls here to avoid bullets, and use mixed drinks as necessary to clear out the mercs in the Yucatan Casino's vault.
Pull out your sledgehammer and take out the drill in the back. You can restock on another sledgehammer on the right side of the drill if you want here as well. On the way out, grab the cash and money case on the wall behind the drill. This one's a whopping $185,000. Next stop is the Atlantica, but it's actually on the Fortune Park side. Head to the restrooms to save if you want, and Baron Von Brothaus for more mixed drinks if you need to. Then head to the south exit of the Yucatan in the Silver Strip. This is a straight shot south. The maintenance room on your right has knife gloves if you need a weapon. Otherwise, head to the van outside the Atlantica Casino, taking out any resistance in your way. Kill all the mercenaries around the van, and once the area is clear, start smashing the van with your sledgehammer. This will take a while, but once you're done, you'll finish case 4-2, run for the money. Now go ahead and set your marker to Wilted Flower, and enter the Atlantica Casino. Now just cut through, and enter the Palisades. Head to the very back of the Palisades and up the escalator. If you didn't do the fight with Slappy, now is your opportunity to do it. Otherwise, just head to Lee's Fine Liquors and heal yourself if necessary, then grab a drink of your choice. Then go back down the escalators and enter the Venus Touch on your left. Head to the back room to find Lynette. Talk to her and give her the booze to get her to join up with you. Carry her and exit the Venus Touch. Then head up the escalators and around the left side until you reach a brand new you. Inside, head to the changing rooms in the back and use the shortcut to take you to the restrooms in Royal Flush Plaza. From now on, this is the fastest way to and from Royal Flush Plaza and the Palisades and we will use it every chance that we get. Carry Lynette back through Royal Flush Plaza and drop her off at the safe house, then go ahead and save. We have absolutely nothing to do until 7pm. There's not really anything to do in this time frame. Just go ahead and slaughter zombies with combo weapons for PP, or hunt down the remaining PP stickers in Fortune City. You can also just AFK if you really want to. What you should do is take the shortcut to the Palisades. Then head to ground level and make knife gloves in the maintenance room and kill zombies here for 150 PP a kill. Unless somehow you're level 30 at this point and you have the combo card for knife gloves which will give you 300 PP a kill. Once the knife gloves break, zone into the Yucatan Casino, and then back into the Palisades. Make another pair of knife gloves, and repeat this process. Around 6.30pm, you want to head to the south end of the Palisades on the second level. Enter High Noon Shooting Range and grab a gun from the racks. Any gun should be fine, but I grabbed a handgun and a shotgun just to be safe. You can use these fairly liberally as you make your way across the Palisades to the Yucatan Casino. Just make sure you have some ammo left, otherwise we won't be able to rescue y Yanis. At 7pm, you'll get a call from Stacy about a golfer in sports trance in the Royal Flush Plaza. Set your marker to it, but we need to make a quick stop along the way. Once that call's done, zone from the Yucatan Casino into the food court. Head across the food court until you find a kiosk with a giant globe that says food court. Pretty easy to find. Climb up here and talk to Yanis, who won't join unless you have a gun, but you should have one, so he should join without much issue. Now just continue south through Slot Ranch Casino and follow your marker until you reach Royal Flush Plaza. If you find a queen here, it may or may not be helpful depending on how things go. Pick one up if it's convenient. Inside Royal Flesh Plaza, follow your marker to Sports Trance on ground level. You'll find Luz being swarmed by zombies. Use the queen if you have one, or clear them out the old-fashioned way. Once they're gone, talk to Luz and she'll join up with you. Now just take Yanis and Luz back to the safe house. You'll be rewarded with some petty cash here for your efforts, but the ride isn't over yet. Save if you want, and head back out. Restock if you need weapons. Head to the Palisades now by heading through the shortcut in the Royal Flush Plaza bathrooms. You should get a call here about a woman in the underground. Set your marker to wax on, wax off. In the Palisades, jump down and enter the underground access just like you did for the case with TK on the train. Grab a set of knife gloves from the maintenance room nearby if you need them. Follow this path until you reach a loading bay. Kill the mercenaries here using knife gloves. Once they're clear, talk to Tomomi and she'll join up with you. Now it's just a simple task of escorting her back up to the Palisades, then around to the brand new U shortcut, then from the restrooms to the safe house. Save if you want. It's probably around 8.30 at this point, and the next scoop isn't until 11pm, and it's a psychopath battle. Do whatever you see fit during this time, but killing zombies with combo weapons is likely the most efficient use of your time. You can go ahead and stop by the second floor of the Palisades and head to Stan's large print books and magazines to grab the Psycho's book here. There's a few psychopaths coming up and the bonus PP is worth getting. Around 10.30pm, you should head into the Americana Casino for a restock of quick steps and painkillers if you need to. Then wait out the time until 11pm when Stacy will call about a postal cart in Royal Flush Plaza. Once she does, set your marker to Mail Order Zombrex and zone back into Royal Flush Plaza. Do a quick restock on spike bats or knife gloves at the maintenance room if you need to. When you're ready, examine the postal cart. You'll start a battle with Carl the Postal Postman. Carl isn't overly difficult, like most of the psychopaths in Dead Rising 2. Our strategy is the same. 
run him down, smack him once, and then back out and wait for another chance. You can use the new stand in the center, or some of the various shops around as a buffer if you ever need to heal. Quick steps are favorite here, as Carl will run around throwing bombs at you. With a quick step active and the speed boost from the sports fan outfit, you should be able to close the distance and run him down while avoiding the explosions. You can use the shops around and the new stand to avoid his shotgun blasts. Once he reloads, you can resume your chase. It shouldn't be a difficult fight, just abuse quick steps and you should come out ahead. Once he's dead, you have to kill time until 12am. Do whatever you want during this time frame, but be close to the Americana Casino. At 12am, you'll get a call from Stacy about meeting up with Rebecca at Benny Jack's Barbecue Shack. Once you do, zone into the Americana and follow your marker to case 5-1, the source, on the upper level. You'll finish the case and you'll get a bomb dropped on you that Rebecca is kidnapped and you need $1 million before 7pm today. That only leaves you with 19 hours to gather the cash you need. Of course, you probably already have the money, so don't worry too much about it. But, if you don't, go ahead and start pilfering the slot machines and ATMs around Fortune City. Of course, we have other things to do right now. Restock on quick steps and painkillers at the Shots and Awe in the Americana, and then head outside to Fortune Park. You'll encounter a cutscene with the snipers. These can be one of the more difficult parts, but it shouldn't be too hard and you can take your time doing it. This part can be kind of buggy. Immediately after leaving, you should head up to the left and get on top of the movie theater to take on Dietz. Of course, he may just not spawn. It happened more than once in my attempts. If he doesn't, just head back down and head to Big Earl first. He's the most difficult one anyways. Getting onto this platform is a bit of a pain, but climb up there and start fighting him. Earl seems to do the most damage out of all the snipers. They all have a very predictable pattern. If you're far away, they'll try and shoot you. If you're close, they'll pull a machete out and try to take a swing at you and then run away again to try to shoot you. Just run them down, taking a hit whenever you can. Once you clear them out, eat the food around the surrounding area and heal up before moving to the next sniper. Head across Fortune Park, past the Royal Flush Plaza entrance, up the Silver Strip. Take a left into the alcove with the maintenance room and go up the ladder to face off against Johnny. This is exactly the same as against Big Earl, but Johnny should go down a little bit easier. Run him down, then grab the booze on the air conditioners before heading back down. Now cross the strip towards the maintenance room on the other side, enter the tunnel that you found Sven in, and head to the back to go up another ladder to the roof of the Atlantica Casino. You'll fight Derek up here. Strategy is the same. Run him down with knife gloves or a spike bat. Once he's dead, head back down. You can restock on health via the snacks at the machines on the way back to the Silver Strip if you need to. Now you can head to Dietz if he glitched out and didn't spawn in your game, like he did for me. Just head past the Paradise Platinum screens, enter Jugs if you need some more mixed drinks, then exit and climb the ladder to fight him. Dietz is more of the same. Run him down with knife gloves and use healing items as necessary. Once he's down, Fortune Park is free from the tyranny of the snipers. Eat Dietz's Happy Meal, and then head back down to Fortune Park. Now it's likely after 1am at this point, which means the high rollers have spawned for their poker game in the Atlantica Casino. We want our hedger bets, so it's best to gather the three gambling magazines here. Head south and enter the Americana Casino. Head to Benny Jack's Barbecue Shack and on the second level pick up the gambling magazine near the lights you can jump across. Now just make your way back to Royal Flush Plaza, then just cut straight through to the Palisades shortcut in the restrooms. Exit brand new you and jump over the railing. Head to the center grotto and climb the stairs to the water slide. On one of the tables is the second gambling magazine. You can throw away the Psycho's book for now if you need the inventory space. Once you've got it, head south to the Atlantica Casino. The final magazine is in the Uranus Zone vaults. Cut through the Atlantica and exit into the Uranus Zone. We should have already unlocked the box it's contained in, so just head back there now. We have picked up a few extra keys since then, so go ahead and plunder the lock boxes since we're here anyways, and grab the cash from the floor and the money case. Make sure to grab the third gambling magazine before you head back to the Atlantica Casino. Off the record's checkpoint system makes this a lot easier than Standard Dead Rising 2. Go ahead and enter the poker room. I got a call from Stacy here about the scoop Barn Burner at 3am. I am terrible at poker, but with the sports fan outfit and the three gambling magazines this went fairly fast. You'll get better cards and have a much better chance of success. Go ahead and gamble smart or just constantly go all in. 
if you're going for the all-in strategy, if you ever lose your cash, just reload your checkpoint and try again. This took me a handful of attempts and about 10 real-time minutes to complete. For winning the poker game, you'll get a cool $1 million, which is a free way to pay Rebecca's ransom. Once you're finished, you can throw away the gambling magazines if you want, but you could also hang on to them as there's another poker game coming up shortly. We can always regather the magazines later. You should probably hang on to the one from the Uranus Zone, as it's harder to get, and ditch the one from Benny Jacks if you need the space. You'll get a call from Stacy around this time depending on how long the poker game took for WWJWD. Ignore it for now, take your survivors north, and leave the Atlantica into the Palisades. You'll also probably get a call from Stacy after leaving the Atlantica about a mermaid. Again, ignore this for now. Take the set of high rollers to the second level and use the shortcut in brand new U to head back to Royal Flush Plaza. Then just hoof it back to the safe house. Once you're inside, feel free to save. We're a bit late getting to these, but that's kind of the nature of Off the Record. There's lots of periods of nothing, and lots of periods that are really dense with survivors, but you should have plenty of time to complete everything. We're gonna prioritize the ones that came first, so set your marker to Barn Burner. Head to your right and enter the Americana Casino. Feel free to stop at the bar for more mixed drinks, otherwise just head straight through to Fortune City Arena. You'll probably get a call from Stacy here about a guy in Chris's fine foods at 4am. We'll be heading up there shortly, so don't worry too much about it. Just follow your marker to the back of the Fortune City Arena, around where you started the game. You do need a food item for that last call, so you can grab a snack from the vending machines on the way to Barn Burner. Past the green rooms, you'll see a fire. Kill the zombies around and pick up the fire extinguisher. Use it to douse the flames and then enter the room to find Elrod and Trixie Lynn. Talk to them and get them to join you. You have plenty of time here, so go ahead and take Elrod and Trixie Lynn back to the safe house by doubling back through the arena. You can take them through to the south plaza for the next psychopath battle, but that's your call. It's easier and safer to take them back through the arena, through the Americana Casino, and then back to the safe house in Royal Flush Plaza. Once you're finished, you can save if you want, then head back out to Royal Flush Plaza. Set your marker for WWJWD, and then head through Royal Flush Plaza to Fortune Park. You'll probably get a call from Stacy here about a guy looting ATMs. Ignore it for now, and cut across the park, stopping by Jugs if you need some healing items, and then enter the Fortune City Hotel. Just head south through the doors into the South Plaza and you'll trigger the battle with Seymour. Seymour is pretty easy. Same strategy as always, just run him down with knife gloves. Take a hit or two, followed by backing out and it should lead to an easy victory. He has a gun, but you'll likely be in his face so often that he won't use it too much. There are plenty of pillars to run and hide behind if you ever need to heal, as well as the scaffolding and statue if you need some distance. Realistically, you should be able to trade blows with him and be able to take him out pretty easily. Just hide behind a pillar and burn a painkiller or a quick step if you really need to, and that should be more than enough to take him down. After the fight, you can grab Seymour's six shooter off the saw. It's a decent gun. Then head to the maintenance room nearby to find Ray. Talk to him, and he'll join up with you. Now it's time to head to the Atlantica Casino. Exit the Fortune City Hotel and run north through Fortune Park to enter the Atlantica. If you need food, take a pit stop by Jugs or the Paradise Platinum screens for a food item. You definitely need one coming up. Head north in the Atlantica, but stay on the right side. You'll find Tammy sitting on the giant clam display. Talk to her and get her to join you. Then pick her up and take both of them north into the Palisades Mall. There's a set of vending machines on your right. This is your last chance to get a food item. Inside, just head up the escalator on your right to enter Chris's Fine Foods. Find Richard in the back who's begging for snacks. Put down Tammy and give Richard whatever food item you have. He won't accept mixed drinks, so make sure you have something before coming here. It was 7am when I got to Richard, which means another Zombrex for Frank. Go ahead and use it now. After Richard eats, he'll join up with you. Now pick up Tammy again and escort everyone back to the brand new U to take the shortcut back to Royal Flush Plaza. Now just take everyone back to the safe house and zone in once everyone's there. You'll get some cash for your troubles, but you should be well past the million dollar mark at this point. You'll also get another Zombrex, which will replace the one you just used, so that's kinda nice. Go ahead and save before heading back out to Royal Flush Plaza. Now it's time to save Woodrow who's looting ATMs on the Silver Strip. The Tape Eater die crew are also available and we'll need to pick up some stuff along the way for that. Restock on combo weapons at the maintenance room if you need to, otherwise just continue through Royal Flush Plaza and zone into Fortune Park. Head left and up the Silver Strip on the right side until you reach the Shamrock Casino. Enter to find Woodrow at the back. Talk to him and he'll request that you escort him around to the ATMs on the Silver Strip. Just stick close to him and follow him around clearing out any zombies that get in your way with your combo weapons. Queens are really helpful here, so if you find one, go ahead and use it. Woodrow has some bad AI and won't start looting the machines until there are no zombies around in most cases, which makes this pretty annoying. 
Also, try not to hit him too much since it's really easy with the zombies around. The last machine is in the Paradise Platinum Screen's movie theater. Once that's done, Woodrow will join up. Since we're close, just run back to the Royal Flush Plaza and drop off Woodrow at the safe house. Grab another spike bat and you'll probably get a call from Stacy about a strip poker game around this time. Save if you want, and then head back out to the Royal Flush Plaza. Now it's time for the Taper to Die crew. We need to get a stack of plates and a cement saw for one of their wacky inventions, so unfortunately we can't just jump through the shortcut to the Palisades this time. Go ahead and head through Royal Flush Plaza and zone into Fortune Park. Now head north towards the Yucatan and cruise through the Silver Strip until you reach Lowie Wowie on the right side. Grab a stack of plates from the tables immediately on your right and then jump down and grab a cement saw near the maintenance room. Don't drop the cement saw. Since you can't pocket it, it's easy to get knocked out of your hand by zombies. Now head into the Yucatan Casino. Head up the escalator and turn to your right to get to the Palisades. Off the record has some signage for the Taper to Die crew so follow the signs into Coconut Sports Town. Use the door at the back to enter their hideout. Bring the cement saw and plates to Wallace in the back and he'll give you a plate launcher in return. Go ahead and talk to the rest of the crew if you want, but we're done here for now. We can't rescue them until later on. Once you've got the plate launcher, head back up to the Palisades. You'll likely have a bunch of time to kill here, and the best thing to do is strip poker. Use the plate launcher until you run out of ammo for the lulls, and then jump up to the grotto in the center of the palisades for the gambling magazine for time efficiency. You'll also need to give Jared a Zombrex at 11am, so make sure you're in the vicinity of the safe house at this time. Just kill zombies in the Royal Flush Plaza until you get a call from Stacy at 11am. Then just zone in, give Jared the Zombrex, wait a second so it registers you actually did it, since off the record is pretty buggy, and then leave. Now you should do some final preparations for strip poker since we have some time to kill. Go ahead and grab the second gambling magazine from the second floor of Benny Jack's in the Americana, then head back to the Royal Flush Plaza. Use the shortcut to get to the Palisades, and then grab the third gambling magazine from the table near the water slide in the grotto if you didn't get it. Once you're done that, head into the Yucatan and kill zombies until it's 12pm and you'll get a call from Stacy about a hot cop and the hot Excitorama. Once you do, zone out to the Silver Strip. Head south on the left side until you reach hot Excitorama. Talk to Deidre multiple times until she joins. She strikes a pose every time you talk to her, so have your camera ready for some big boy PP gains. Once she joins, you can give her a massager for some hilarious dialogue, and she won't let you give her any other weapon after that. If you do not have it, make sure to grab the erotic magazine here. You'll get bonus PP for rescuing Deidre immediately, but we also will need it shortly, so make sure that you have it. You should still have the one we have from the start of the game, but if you don't, pick it up now. Now just exit Hot Exciterama and head south with Deidre to zone into Royal Flush Plaza. Then go ahead and enter the safe house. You'll get some cash from her for your trouble. Now we finally have a hot minute to do strip poker. Save, set your marker to anti up, and head to the back room of the safe house. This is technically optional, but you do need it for Jack's Proto Man helmet. You'll need to win a ton of hands to come out ahead here. Your best option is if you ever lose all your cash, just restart, since having a cash advantage lets you bully your opponents and pick up the blinds to gradually wear them down. This is simply a poker grind, and you're probably better at poker than I am. You have unlimited retries here, so just restart from a checkpoint if you ever fail. Unfortunately, this part took me over an hour worth of attempts, and I hated every second of it. If you ever get a person totally stripped, you can go ahead and leave and rezone to save your progress if you want. Then, once you restart your checkpoint, you won't have to take them down again. It's definitely a bit long-winded, and it took me about 15 minutes of real time to beat everyone on my good attempt. Once you've cleared them all, you'll automatically be wearing the Proto Man helmet. Take some pictures for a memento of your victory if you want, otherwise leave this godforsaken room. Head back to the locker in the restroom and put the sports fan helmet back on for the sick move speed bonuses, and then save your game. You have nothing to do until 3pm. It was 2.52pm when I finished poker and left to Royal Flush Plaza. Go ahead and ditch the three gambling magazines now, you won't be needing them again. Restock on combo weapons and grab a queen if you can find one, it will be helpful. At 3 p.m. you'll get two calls from Stacy, one about Richard harassing girls and one about the stage in the Slot Ranch Casino. Head back into the safe house and talk to Richard. Give him the erotic magazine and you'll prevent him from perving out and grossing out a bunch of your female survivors to the point where they leave. He'll give you $100. Make sure to stick around until you see Mutiny Averted again. Off the record's pretty buggy, then head out to the Royal Flush Plaza. We need to get some things before we head to One Hit Wonder, but go ahead and set your marker. This is a psychopath battle, but we don't need to actually fight. Restock on combo weapons and look for a queen as you head to the restrooms. Take the shortcut to the Palisades and pick up the Psychos magazine from Stan's large print books and magazines. Then head back to Brand New You and take the shortcut back to Royal Flush Plaza. Head through Royal Flush Plaza towards Slot Ranch Casino and pick up a tuxedo from the Modern Businessman. 
Also grab the vodka from the racks at the back of the store. Don't head into Slot Ranch Casino now though. Instead, exit out to Fortune Park. Head up the Silver Strip and make a beeline for Hot Excitorama to pick up a replacement erotic magazine. We will be rescuing more female survivors shortly and we could use the PP. If you see a queen, grab it here. Then go ahead and cross the strip into the Slot Ranch Casino. Hang a right and go to the bar for a drink for BB just to save yourself some time. Then follow your marker to the stage. Talk to BB and since you're wearing a tux, she'll ask for a drink. Give her the drink and then head to the back of the stage and pick up some fireworks. Gather a crowd of zombies by using the fireworks and once it's big enough, talk to BB. You'll have to use the panel and you'll engage in a short rhythm minigame. Fantastic. Once it's over, jump down and use your queen to save BB. Then talk to her and she'll join up. Otherwise, you'll have to be careful about clearing the crowd of zombies around her with combo weapons or special moves like the knee drop. Once everyone's with you, grab Cameron and give him a shoulder. Then get the heck out of Slot Ranch Casino and exit to Royal Flush Plaza. Make your way through Royal Flush Plaza back to the safe house. Your posse will probably get stuck on looters, so babysit them a bit more and they should get back safely. Once you're back, BB will give you... $100. Then head to the restrooms and put your sports fan outfit back on to get the bonuses and save your game. You'll probably have some time to kill here until 6pm. It's a bit of a trend in off the record. There is another Psychopath battle coming up, so make sure to restock on combo weapons in Royal Flesh Plaza, and painkillers and quick steps at the Americana Casino while you wait. Stick close to the restrooms in Royal Flesh Plaza and you'll get a call from Stacy about three women in the grotto in the Palisades. Once you do, use the shortcut, jump over the railing, and head up the stairs. Talk to Cora, who will join you after you give her $10,000. Then jump down and head back up to the second level and run to the brand new U shortcut. Then just take these three beauties back to the safe house. This is your last chance to restock on some combo weapons, head back to the restrooms in Royal Flush Plaza, and use the washroom shortcut to get back to the Palisades. Also, make sure you're wearing the full sports fan outfit here, so you don't have to make an on-the-fly detour to Coconut Sports Town to get the clothes back. Head straight through the Palisades and into the Yucatan Casino. You'll probably get a call about a tall clown here, but ignore it for now. You can make a quick detour to Baron Von Broadhouse to make some drinks if you need to, but otherwise, just follow your markers straight to the Shoal Nightclub. You'll lose $1 million here, and that really hurts. I'm honestly surprised they don't just take all of your money though. Of course, you'll also start the twin psychopath battle here. You realistically have two options on how to tackle this. Focus one of the twins, or just hit whichever twin comes your way. The fight ends after beating one twin, so it makes sense to focus one down. However, you may get more opportunities to hit one twin over the other. So splitting your efforts isn't the worst case scenario. That being said, don't you dare hit my best girl Amber. So take out your pent up aggression on her sister Crystal. The twins are fast, but you can still run them down with a sports fan outfit and an active quick step. You'll have several photo ops here which will expand your PP bonuses, but it's usually not worth the effort to try and get them as you'll be double teamed by the twins in the bad way, not the good way. There is an absolutely massive amount of booze and shoal, so healing should be a non-issue here. With the sports fan outfit equipped, you can't get sick, so you're free to use as much as you need to if you ever run out of quick steps and painkillers. Otherwise, it's standard fare. Pick a sister and chase her around with a bat. Take a hit or two, then run away to avoid the counter before resuming the chase. If you need to heal, let the sisters run away and just hide behind a wall. Then once you're ready, go back on the hunt. This is one of the more difficult fights, but that's really only judging things on a bell curve. Once you're done, guzzle some of the booze around if you need health, then make sure to take a vodka for the road. Exit Shoal into the Yucatan Casino, head left and exit into the Palisades. Grab a set of knife gloves from the maintenance room if you want, otherwise head up to the brand new U and take the shortcut back to Royal Flush Plaza and save your game in the restrooms. Now you should set your marker to... Snow job, uh which is another psychopath battle. Go ahead and restock on knife gloves and spike bats at the maintenance room by the safe house. Otherwise, head to the Americana Casino. Restock on mixed drinks here before heading out to the platinum strip from the Americana. Turn right and head towards the clown car near the motorcycle to trigger another psychopath battle. This is a two-phase fight. Start off by handling it the same way you've done every other psychopath in the game up to this point. Just chase Evan down and take swings at his stilts with knife gloves or spike bats. Then run out to avoid his counter stomps. He'll shoot snowballs up in the air, which create ice pads where they land. Try to avoid fighting Evan on the ice pads as you'll slip and slide around. Otherwise, just another easy psychopath. At about 30% HP, he'll lose the stilts and start running around like Sonic the Hedgehog. Strategy hasn't changed here. You can tank most of his attacks since they deal pathetic damage. If he grabs you, just mash the stick and then you'll punt him off. 
and then take a couple swings at him. He'll usually taunt after a successful attack and that's an opportunity for free damage. This stage of the fight doesn't last too long. Nothing much to say here otherwise. Once he's dead, jump on the motorcycle and set your marker to case 6-1 and drive to the Fortune City Hotel. Go ahead and stop at Jugs if you need some more healing items. You probably don't. Inside the hotel, hang a right to head to the elevators. Kill all the mercenaries here and use the button to call the elevator. Kill the last mercenary inside and then head up to the rooftop. You'll start a battle with a helicopter. It's not overly difficult. You need to avoid it until you can run and press the green button on the crane. Then it'll yank the helicopter down and that's when you can actually damage it. You need to throw stuff at the blades to damage it. There's plenty of things around like spotlights and fences you can use here. Try and stockpile about three spotlights here so you can quickly whip a bunch of them to maximize your efficiency. After a moment, the crane goes back up and you need to wait for the green button again. Just run around on the far side of the helipad to avoid bullets while collecting stuff to throw. Then once the button's green again, run up to it, press it, and chuck whatever you've got at the helicopter's blades again. Feel free to use the dodge roll to avoid the helicopter when it comes close to you. It's just a matter of repeating this process until the fight's over. It's not super difficult or complicated. Just get her done. Shouldn't be too much trouble. Afterwards, you'll be transported back to the safe house. You'll get your million dollars back as a nice little bonus. If it's after 9 p.m., head to the cafeteria to find Sven. If you still have the vodka from Shoal, give it to him. Otherwise, break the box next to him for an attempt at another one. Once you give him a whiskey or vodka, he'll give you another Zombrex. If you don't have one, just grab one from the Americana Casino and head back to the safe house. Or don't. We actually don't really need this Zombrex. Otherwise, exit back out to Royal Flush Plaza. Again, you'll likely have about two to three hours to kill here. This is more free time. You'll want to restock on mixed drinks like Quick Steps and Painkillers at the Americana Casino. Then you should restock on weapons like Spike Bats and Knife Gloves in the Royal Flush Plaza. Once you're done that, simply kill some time, probably by killing zombies until you're close to 12 a.m. Then do another quick restock on weapons and healing items. I got a call from Stacy when I was in Royal Flush Plaza killing zombies. Once you do, set your marker for World's Most Dangerous Trick. If you're in Royal Flush Plaza, take the restroom shortcut to the Palisades, then head south to the Atlantica Casino. If you're not, just make your way to the Atlantica. Follow your marker to the magic stage and you'll start the fight with Roger and Reed. Your focus should initially be on Reed. Roger will probably just run off after he takes a swing or two at you. Reed is extremely simple and our strategy is actually perfect here. Take a swing with knife gloves, then immediately back out to avoid his counterattack. Then just head back in, take another swing, before backing out. Roger will likely leave you alone for the most part here. If he does harass you, just play slightly more carefully until he inevitably runs off like Naruto. Once Reed is down, you can go ahead and run to the bar behind you to get some free heals before hunting down Roger. You'll basically have to chase Roger around the slot machines for a while, taking pot shots at him when you can. Then it's the same thing. Once he stops, lay the smack down on him until he runs off again, then repeat the process. If your health glitches out like mine did, don't worry, just heal yourself and you should be fine. Stupid buggy game. Once you've dispatched the Siegfried and Roy stand-ins, go ahead and take a memento picture for some PP. Also grab Reed's rocket launcher since why not? Then exit the Atlantica Casino and use the rocket launcher in Fortune Park until you get a call from Stacy about a girl on the roof at the Fortune City Hotel. She's got a gun! Once you get the call, zone into the Fortune City Hotel. Then take the elevators up to the roof and talk to Lillian. Now head back down the elevator, exit the hotel to Fortune Park, and then head up the Silver Strip to enter the Slot Ranch Casino. Then just head right and through to the food court. Stick to the right side and enter Rojo Diablo Mexican Restaurant to find Camille in the kitchen area. Talk to her and she'll join up with you. Now it's just a matter of doubling back to the Fortune City Hotel roof. Head back down to Slot Ranch Casino and exit onto the Silver Strip. Then go ahead and head south back to the Fortune City Hotel. Zone in and then use the elevator to get back up to the roof with Camille. Lillian and Camille will be reunited, so go ahead and take a picture for some bonus PP. Now it's just a matter of getting everyone back safe and sound. You'll likely get a call from Luz wanting something from you, we can do it on the way. Head back down the elevator, exit to Fortune Park, and cross it to re-enter Royal Flush Plaza. Head back to the safe house but stop by Sport Trance. Head inside, kill any looters in here, and get to the second level. Grab a golf club from the racks on the right side before heading back down. Now exit Sport Trance and take your survivors back to the safe house. Inside, head to the cafeteria and give Luz the golf club to fulfill her request, Bent Wood. You also get a bit of cash for your trouble. Now go ahead and save. There's not a ton to do right now, so go ahead and restock on combo weapons and mixed drinks if you need to. Then go ahead and cross Royal Flush Plaza to kill time in Fortune Park until 3am. You'll get a call from Stacy about an old woman. 
Zone back into Royal Flush Plaza, then head up the stairs on your left, then turn left to enter Children's Castle. Talk to Esther until she joins up with you after a lengthy conversation. Go ahead and carry her back to the safe house. Now we don't have much significant to do until 7am when we have to use a Zombrex, which is trivial, and the second to last set of survivors, which is at 8am. You'll probably want to use this time to try and gain a level or two by smashing zombies with combo weapons or getting the remaining PP stickers in Fortune City if you care about those. This is roughly 5 hours of in-game time, which is about 25 minutes of real time, so you have a lot of time to kill here, as is the custom and off the record. First things first though, go ahead and use the Royal Flush Plaza shortcut to get to the Palisades. Now head across the top level until you reach the Clarou Collection. In here, grab a Peace Art, it's one of the small plants. We'll need it at around 4.30am. Make sure that you keep this in your inventory, otherwise you'll need to do another trip later. Head back to the Royal Flush Plaza or use the maintenance room in the Palisades to restock on knife gloves and use them until they break. Then rezone and repeat this process. Once you get a call from Stacy about Europa, head back to the safe house at 4.30am. Give her the peace art to fulfill her request, go ahead and save since you're here, then return to the palisades and resume your killing spree. Head back to the palisades via the shortcut, kill zombies and continually restock on combo weapons until 7am at which point you should use a zombrex. Now continue to kill time in the palisades killing zombies with combo weapons until it's close to 8am. At this point you'll want to zone into the Yucatan casino. If you see a queen here you should try and pick it up. Also make sure to be stocked up on mixed drinks, especially quick steps now at Baron Von Brothaus. At 8am you'll get a call from Stacy about the tape it or die crew. Head back into the palisades and head to Coconut Sports Town. Clear the zombies around the group, preferably with a queen if you have one, otherwise just be careful. Once it's clear, talk to them and they'll all join up. Now just hoof it up the escalator and head to the brand new U. Take the shortcut and return the crew to the safe house. Go ahead and save here. You've rescued the last female survivor, you can safely discard the erotic magazine now to gain another inventory slot. Now you should spend the remaining time restocking on items. You'll want to be in Fortune Park, ready to head to the top of the Royal Flesh Plaza where you fought the sniper Johnny at 9am. Go ahead and make any preparations you need like combo weapons or mixed drinks, and then head there to complete Case 7-1, Help Arrives. You'll immediately start Case 7-2 and need to rescue Rebecca. The more annoying gas zombies are now here. You can safely avoid them just by hoofing it, but they can swarm you pretty easily if you get hit. Just take a swing with a knife bat, or the strong attack of the knife gloves should be enough to clear away for you. Follow your waypoint, taking a stop at the maintenance room on your left if you need a set of knife gloves. Otherwise, just follow your waypoint north until you reach the Yucatan. Then hang a right and pass through the now broken gate into the tunnel. Now just follow your waypoint and pass the boxes to start the battle with Sergeant Boykin. The strategy remains the same. You'll have to be more aggressive with your dodging since Boykin will spray bullets at you frequently so you'll need to move in a serpentine fashion. Quick steps are definitely your friend here. Pop one early once you take damage and you should be able to easily dodge the gunshots and his counterattacks. If you ever get hit by a counter, you'll likely be locked into a grab and take a lot of damage so be prepared to run away to heal afterwards. There's ample cover in this area. Jump behind a pillar or use the container or a Humvee to make some space and get a chance to heal if you need to. Otherwise, he's kind of the same as every other psychopath. Just hit and run, baby. Wear him down through attrition. Once you've beat him, you'll start case 7-3, Lean On Me. Go ahead and pick up Rebecca and head out the way you came into the Silver Strip. Once you're outside, you'll find Sergeant Wu and Private Cuss. Talk to Sergeant Wu and eventually they'll both join up with you. It's your call which way to go here. I prefer to zone into the Yucatan and then head into the Palisades, then up and around to the brand new U to use the shortcut as it feels like there's less of the gas zombies along the way. Your other option is just to cut down the Silver Strip and zone into Royal Flush Plaza and go that way. It's probably pretty similar in terms of time, so do whatever you prefer. Just zone into the safe house with your posse and make sure they're close enough to zone. Once you zone in, you'll get a bunch of cutscenes and you'll immediately start an event to gather items to secure the safe house. This part is a lot more unforgiving and off the record than standard Dead Rising 2 and it is possible for your survivors to die in here. If you're fast and help clear zombies around the survivors, you can get through without losing one or two. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter since there's no achievement for it. If one of your survivors dies and you want a perfect game, simply reload a save. Otherwise, don't sweat it too much. Just follow the markers and grab the three items that you need. Kirby by the spool of wire was usually the one who died for me most while testing this, so you probably want to clear out the zombies near him. Otherwise, just try and do this as fast as possible. Once you've gathered the items, hack the panel to close the gate. Just mash X as fast as you can and it will shut eventually, which leads into the next scene.
Once you regain control of Frank, go ahead and complete TK Needs Zombrex. You should have plenty of Zombrex at this point for Frank and TK. If you don't, you can swing by a pawn shop and buy one for $50,000. Once you've given TK the Zombrex, you'll be locked into overtime mode, so if for whatever reason you want a different ending, don't give TK the Zombrex. Case 8-2 is simple enough. If you need healing items or combo weapons, be sure to restock. Otherwise, just go ahead and take the shortcut to the Palisades. Follow your marker and head to the underground. Again, you can stop by the maintenance room for a pair of knife gloves if you need it. Once you're in the underground, just follow the marker. Once the loading bay opens up to the tunnel, turn right and follow the large flock of zombies. Avoid or kill any mercenaries in your way. Once you reach the door, jump into the barricaded area, take out the mercenaries and use the keypad to proceed. Now you need to climb up the machinery on your right to reach the top. Kill the mercenaries in here with knife gloves, then go ahead and eat the happy meal on the table before proceeding forward to your marker. Use the keypad through the tunnel to unlock the door. Kill Mark and Pierce here with knife gloves. Just run them down. They're barely stronger than standard mercenaries. You'll finish case 8-2 and start case 8-3, which just requires you to get back to the safe house. Now use the elevator at the back. You'll wind up in the Palisades. You can either exit out to the Silver Strip and run through to Royal Flush Plaza, or you can use the shortcut at Brand New U on the second level of the Palisades. It's your call. Once you get back to the safe house, you'll get some grand expository reveals, and you'll start the facts. This is the final part of the main game. Your immediate goal is to get situated for the hardest part of it. Restock on knife gloves if you need them in Royal Flush Plaza. These are a very high priority. You need to have a couple pairs as you can one-shot mercs most of the time with them. You can also head to the Americana Casino for some extra healing items if you need them. Otherwise, head through Royal Flush Plaza, which is now swarming with mercenaries, to enter Fortune Park. You'll have to take out harvesters here. They are all over the place, so start by hanging a right to head down the Platinum Strip. You'll find the first Harvester here and it's guarded by Mercs. Take him out. Try and avoid the blast frequency shots because it will always cause Frank to stop and puke which is mostly just annoying. Run down the Mercs and then smash the Harvester. Continue down the Platinum Strip. If you want you can stop in the movie theater on your right for some healing items before heading down. The second Harvester is next to the diner on your left. Kill the Mercs here prioritizing anyone that's carrying the blast frequency gun. Then finish off the rest before smashing the Harvester. Continue south towards the arena. Stick to the left side to find another Harvester and more Mercs. Standard procedure. Take them out, then smash the Harvester. That was all of them on the Platinum Strip, now head back north. Use the planters in the center to avoid the zombies. You can take a pit stop at Jugs here to make some more mixed drinks like painkillers if you can spare the inventory space. Mix Whiskey Whiskey or Beer and Beer, since Whiskey Beer makes randomizer. You don't want randomizers. Otherwise, head back up to Fortune Park and stick to the right side. In front of the Fortune City Hotel is another Harvester and a set of mercenaries. Take them out, then smash the Harvester. Continue north, killing any mercs in your way. The next Harvester is in between the Uranus Zone and Atlantica Casino entrances. Take out the mercenaries, prioritizing the ones with the BFG, then smash the Harvester. Now turn left at the Atlantica and head forward. The next Harvester is directly in front of the Silver Strip sign. Take out the mercs here, and then smash the Harvester. Now continue north, up the Silver Strip. The next Harvester is right in the middle of the Silver Strip in between the Chapel and the Peep Show, right next to the Fireworks Kiosk. Standard stuff here, take out the Mercs and then smash the Harvester. Continue north towards the Yucatan. You can stop by the maintenance room on your left for another set of knife gloves if you need them, otherwise turn right once you reach the Yucatan to head back towards the gate where you fought Sergeant Wu and Private Cuss. Destroy the last Harvester here and you'll automatically be teleported back to the Uranus Zone entrance. This area is now largely barricaded with containers, just follow your waypoint to the right and you'll enter the boss arena. I really, really wish I was joking here, but you fight Stacy on a super fighting robot and it's beyond dumb, even by modern Dead Rising standards. This is a three phase fight. In the first phase, you wanna to run towards the center of the area and bait the robot into smashing one of its arms down. When it starts to smash, run directly away from it, wait for it to land, and then go back in and start smashing the armor off the robot claws. This is a fairly long process, but should be fairly painless. Just keep repeating the baiting, backing out, and attacking, and eventually you'll wear down the first health bar. We've been doing this strategy for seven hours now. The second phase is harder and longer as it won't always smash the claw down for easy access. It'll also throw boxes at you, which are deceptively difficult to dodge, 
but will provide you some 2x4s if you're desperate for a weapon. It will also occasionally fire missiles at you which are borderline impossible to dodge but don't deal very much damage. Instead of smashing as its most common attack, the robot will mostly do a couple of like crab swipes at you with the claws. Just back out if this happens and try again. The attack you're looking for in phase 2 is when it does three smashes in a row with both claws working its way towards the center of the arena. Once this attack is over, run in and attack the claws. Now just continue to repeat this process. If you need some breathing room, healing items, or weapons, you can head into the container directly behind you. There's some orange juice, a sledgehammer, and some other goodies in here. It's also a good way to avoid the missiles or a crate that's coming at you. Otherwise, just work down the health bar and you'll eventually start phase 3. The cutscene will show the arms getting blown off and revealing some machinery under the crates. Obviously, this is your hint. Climb the arms and jump onto the machinery and use the button prompt. You'll fire a bunch of missiles at Stacy. Go ahead and jump down and wait for her to fall. Then climb onto the robot's head. Take a picture of Stacy if you want during this time and then use the button prompt to... Man... Engage in a QTE. You'll have to do this with the box on the other side as well. It takes a minimum of three successful QTEs on Stacy to take her down. Unfortunately, the boxes have a recharge timer, so you need to wait in the container until they come back online. Repeat the process until you take her down. What a great final boss fight. Since we gave TK Zombrex, it's time for overtime mode, baby! If you're really slow here, you'll need to give Frank another Zombrex at 7am, but it shouldn't be an issue. You should have two spare Zombrex if you've been following the guide, and at least one if you miss Sven's second freebie. This is identical to the original Dead Rising 2, except a handful of the items are swapped around, so it's no big deal. It's basically just a victory lap around Fortune City. Exit the safe house and restock on a spike bed if you need one, and then turn right out of Royal Flush Plaza to reach the Americana Casino. In the Americana, hug the wall on your right to re-enter the employees only room. Head to the second room at the back to grab the compromising photo from the desk on your left. Now exit. TK will call you and you can listen to the dialogue if you want, otherwise you can just ignore it and continue collecting the items. Now exit the room and head to your right. You can restock on healing items if you need to at the bar here, otherwise just continue south towards the Fortune City Arena. Just cut through the arena, sticking to the left side to be able to exit to the south plaza. Cut through the unfinished clothing store directly in front of you, and when you exit the area, turn left and enter the door to the service tunnels. Follow your marker down the stairs and into the loading bay, then exit and head left to the back of the train. Jump onto it and head to the front to find the Zombrex stash. Pick it up, then head back and jump off the train. Just head straight through this tunnel and stick to the right side. Once you find a ramp up on the right, head up it. Drink the beers if you need a heal, and head up the ladder into the Uranus Zone. You'll be cordoned off by the Phenotrans containers, so just head to your left and enter the service door. Follow this tunnel to exit to the South Plaza again. Cut through the South Plaza, and exit the hotel to get back up to Fortune Park. Now head straight through and zone into the Atlantica Casino. Continue hugging the right wall and turn right at the Giant Clam to enter the Uranus Zone. Turn left and enter the first aid station. Then enter the room on your right to find the sutures on the counter on the right. Now go ahead and double back to the Atlantica Casino. Head right in the Atlantica and ignore everything, just go ahead and zone into the Palisades. Take the right escalator to the second level and continue down this path. Enter Coconut Sports Town and grab the Men's Silk Thong from the ground immediately on your right. If you need to heal, stop at Lee's Fine Liquors before jumping down and exiting into the Yucatan Casino. There's no items here, so just go ahead and head left, down the escalator, and exit onto the Silver Strip. Continue south along the strip until you reach the Pub of Gold Casino on your left. It's just after the stage. Enter the bar and grab the expensive champagne from the back. Heal if you need to with booze here, then leave the pub of gold before crossing the street and zoning into Slot Ranch Casino. Enter the cashier's office and turn left in the office to find the gauze. Then exit and head through the casino to zone into Royal Flush Plaza. Stop by Roy's Mart on your right and enter the back room where you found the first Zombrex. Grab the painkillers from the shelf. We've got everything we need, so it's just a matter of heading to the Fortune City Arena now. Cut through Royal Flush Plaza and enter the Americana Casino. It's not necessary, but you can mix a painkiller and a quick step at the bar here for a slight advantage. It's not nearly as good as in Dead Rising 2, so just go ahead and cut through the Americana Casino towards the arena. You can take a final save at the restrooms on the way if you want, otherwise just head into the Fortune City Arena. Continue forward and then head right up the stairs. Burn a quick step and a painkiller here if you have them, and then zone into the door. You'll be stripped of all your items and be forced to do a rerun of the first Terror's Reality minigame, except this time, you can actually lose. Run around grabbing the items around here. Frank's special moves like the knee drop are extremely valuable here, so go ahead and look them up in the menu if you're not familiar with them. You'll need to take out the first few zombies here by hand before the platforms fall and you'll start the main body of the minigame. You'll want to run around here grabbing weapons and healing items before activating three of the grinders. 
Then you should wait for the main stage of the arena to be flooded with zombies before activating the final grinder and causing the arena to be swathed in flames, clearing it out. Then just repeat this process again once the grinders turn green. Activate 3, wait for the arena to be filled with zombies, then jump on the 4th grinder to kill most of them. I'm pretty sure this event is just timed so you can avoid combat as necessary. Try and avoid taking damage here. The healing items you gather will be useful in the TK fight. You will get a full HP restore after the event is over so don't worry about healing if you feel like it's winding down. Now you'll have to face off against TK. This is exactly like Dead Rising 2 except you have to heal Rebecca instead of raising up Katie and Stacy. Take a couple of swings at TK until he runs away, then climb the scaffolding on your left to pick up the lead pipe and a light. These two weapons should be sufficient for taking out TK. Grab any healing items here that you see as well. You can smash the boxes and they usually contain some if you need them. You do need to heal Rebecca once TK runs off, so heal her for a little bit by mashing the button and then stop as TK attempts to blindside you. If you have a lot of healing items left over from the minigame, you can just trade blows with TK. Smack him around until he runs off, use a healing item, and then heal Rebecca for a little bit before stopping to get eyes on where TK is coming from. He'll usually attempt to charge you, try and dodge it with a roll or just by deking him out on foot. If you get grabbed, you'll have to engage in a short quick time event sequence, so complete it to break him off. Just keep beating him with your pipe until he cowardly runs off, then heal Rebecca. You can get a feel for how long you have until TK comes charging at you. Just stop, dodge TK, and resume the onslaught. TK should go down without much issue. Congratulations, you rescued all the survivors and off the record, and your reward is... nothing. In all seriousness, this is a very good way to get yourself to or very near the level cap, with a good chunk of change in the bank to tackle some more involved achievements in Dead Rising 2 off the record. It does just feel a little bit like Capcom Vancouver did us dirty with the no savior achievement. Too bad nobody was their savior.